All right, let's look at this mid-70s Ibanez banjo that was made in Japan that's absolutely uh, perfect, and let's hear what it sounds like. Here we go. <laughs> About this banjo. Okay, the, the thing that is uh, so amazing about the banjo is the condition. Now, these banjos were made kind of after dueling banjos came out in the late, uh, God, let's see, 72. Yeah, about the mid, uh, mid 70s. And um, because of dueling banjos, people bought banjos like crazy. And we're now getting some of these banjos that have literally sat in the case for. 50 years, 40 years, and uh, whoever owned it never played the banjo. And we know that because we can look at the frets and the fingerboard, and it's virtually perfect. Now, when we say they never played it, yeah, maybe they played it for 20 or 30 hours, took some lessons, but this is about as close to new as you can get. And uh, we'll look at the, at the banjo now. Just as a kind of word of caution, if these banjos have sat for 40 or 50 years and haven't been played, generally you have to go through them and uh, make sure everything fits properly and there's no problems, which we do. Now that whole process takes about five hours, and plus you have to know what you're doing. So we'll talk about that in just a second. So let's look at the banjo. So you have the uh, Ibanez tailpiece that says Ibanez on it. And then uh, the, it's, it's a one-piece armrest, which has two legs on, two feet legs. This is a two-piece flange banjo, okay? Uh, and it's a copy of the Gibson RB800 banjo, which was made in the 70s. And uh, because it has the checkerboard, it's not checkerboard, but the uh, very nice marquee-type binding on it. Okay, see that? That's kind of cool. And now the RB800s were gold-plated, uh, where, where uh, these are chrome-plated. Now the cool thing about chrome is it really doesn't show much, much wear and you can clean it much easier than nickel. Okay, so let's talk about what happened. So we get the banjo and we t take it totally apart. We look at all the parts, make sure there's nothing wrong, make sure the keys work, make sure it's a totally functional banjo. Then. We have a special buffer, special uh, material that we were shown by one of the leading banjo makers, ah, Steve Huber. Look at that, Steve Huber. Now, Steve, and we do have some Huber banjos for sale, not many because they sell so quickly. But anyway, so let's look up the, uh, the fingerboard. Anyway, Steve not only showed us how to use uh, how to buff stuff. He even gave us a list of the specific materials to use based on his 30 years of being in the business. Because if you don't do it right, you'll actually take the uh, finish off of the parts. Okay, so let's look at the fingerboard. 
And uh, we'll do a close-up, and I don't know if you can notice it, but it's in really, really good condition. Uh, virtually no fretware. There might be a little, you know, if you take a microscope out, you might see something, but for all intents and purposes, it's perfect. The other thing that's really cool about it is that uh, back in the 70s, people started using a fist string capo, which involved drilling two or three small holes in the neck. Now, it's not that big a deal, but when you have one without the holes, that means that it has not been really messed with. All right, so let's, let's go up the neck and we'll look at the headstock. Very distinctive uh, Ibanez, and this is the wreath pattern. We'll turn it around and you'll notice this is a maple banjo. And we look at the resonator, and it's very striking like this. And also, the, uh, the binding has aged very nicely, which uh, shows age. It's really cool. And uh, let's look at, let's take it apart. Okay, so that's the resonator. And then we uh, uh, look at the shell itself. Oh, this even has a, a serial number, B50546, that on the uh, stamped on the heel. Didn't even know that. Another stamp on the uh, shell, which we won't look at. And what that does, it just authenticates and means that it's original. It's got a heavyweight tone ring in it, which, which well, you can't really see that. But you can just notice that everything about the banjo is really nice. It sounds incredible. And they actually can't make these banjos anymore. It would in some cases, they can't find the wood because uh, 30, 40, 50 years ago, there was much better wood out there. Uh, the uh, manufacturing processes now, in many cases, cost more. The old art, some, a lot of the old guys that uh, used to make these are no longer with us. And uh, so it's virtually impossible to recreate these. And if you look at how much these cost based on new banjos, this would cost at least twice as much as we're asking for it. The case is original and really nice. So if you have any questions about this, you can either go to banjowarehouse.com or you can call Andy at 404-372-5482. If you do want to come and visit us, give us a day's notice because we may be at lunch. We may be... Uh, out looking for banjos, and uh, you can come anytime, Saturday, Sunday, and if you can, plan on spending at least four hours here, because I think we have about 120 banjos right now, and it literally takes four or five hours to kind of get used to it, and after the banjos warm up, you warm up, you kind of feel comfortable, you'll start hearing some sounds that you really like, and I was telling somebody the other day that for you to get the knowledge and hear the different sounds that you would hear in four or five hours here, literally would take you 20 years because you'd have to go find the banjo, you'd have to travel to it, you'd have to play it. Of course, it may not be set up right. And then once you've played it, maybe three weeks later, you see another banjo, but you can't really remember which one was, was better. So give us a call. And if you have any questions, we'll be more than happy to, uh, answer them. And if you like these videos, go ahead and hit the subscribe button.